the uh, next paper is uh, adoption of advanced laparoscopy in the United <laughs> States, trends from the National Surgical Quality Improvement Program 2005-2012, presented by Dr. Schechter from uh, San Francisco. Uh, Dr. Zhang, Dr. Sakandi, uh, members, panel, uh, guests, thank you for the opportunity and honor of the podium today. Uh, I have no disclosures to make. Uh, dramatic advances in laparoscopic surgery have occurred many pioneered by members of this organization. However, the prevalence of laparoscopy in the performance of major abdominal surgery, exclusive of cholecystectomy and appendectomy, have not been well described. We hypothesize that laparoscopy has become more prevalent than open surgery for major abdominal operations in the United States. The objectives of our study were to identify the rates of laparoscopy for common major abdominal operations and to assess the 30-day morbidity and mortality rates for these open and laparoscopic operations between 2006 and 2013. We completed a longitudinal study of eight major abdominal procedures performed in all 374 American hospitals participating in the NISQIP between 2006 and 2013. The data were coded and identified using relevant CPT codes. The primary outcome measures included the surgical approach, complication rate, 30-day mortality rate, and hospital length of stay. Due to a yearly increase in the number of hospitals participating in NISQIP, patient numbers reported increased every year. Data were analyzed using percentages rather than absolute numbers to allow true comparisons between the years. Trend lines were plotted for the data, and statistical significance was calculated from the Pearson R score. <clears throat> and, uh, Post-operative outcomes after open and laparoscopic approaches were compared using the chi-squared test for proportions. We chose to study eight major abdominal procedures, uh, right hemicolectomy, left hemicolectomy, nissen fundoplication, adrenalectomy, gastric bypass, heller myotomy, splenectomy, and nephrectomy, which had a roughly 50% chance of being done open or laparoscopic uh, given the skill set of a sur uh, general surgeon. Focus your attention on the last line of this slide. As you can see, the overall prevalence of laparoscopy was 66.4% uh, with a range of 49.1% for right hemicolectomy to 92.1% for gastric bypass during the course of all these years. As you can see from the graph, the prevalence of the laparoscopic surgical approach uh, uh, increased for six of the eight major abdominal operations. The laparoscopic approach increased for the foregut procedures, gastric bypass, hallermyotomy, and nissen fundoplication, as well as the hindgut procedures, the right uh, and left hemicolectomy. Regarding solid organ procedures, there were no changes in prevalence of laparoscopic splenectomy or adrenalectomy, but there was a significant increase in the number of nephrectomies performed laparoscopically. This graph demonstrates the very low mortality rate for these procedures when performed laparoscopically. On the uh, x-axis is the year, on the y-axis is percent mortality. So there was a very low percent, less than 0.5% uh, when performed laparoscopically, which remains steady. In contrast, there was a significant decrease in the mortality rate for the open procedures from 2.4 to 1.9%, accounting for a decrease in the overall mortality rate from 1.2% to 0.82%. Our definition of serious complications is presented on this slide. This, as you can see, the rates of serious complications has, was significantly higher after open surgery, but decreased significantly for both open and laparoscopic procedures during the course of this uh, study. Not surprisingly, the mean length of stay was significantly lower after laparoscopic surgery, between about three and a half days. There was no significant change in the length of stay for either laparoscopic or open surgery during the study period, but the overall length of stay decreased by half a day due to the increasing prevalence of laparoscopy with time. Foregut surgeons led the way in the rapid adoption of laparoscopic techniques for complex abdominal surgery. Procedures such as gastric bypass, nissen fundoplication, and heller myotomy already had a greater than 80% prevalence at the beginning of the study and by 2013, there was near universal use of laparoscopy for these procedures. General surgery and colorectal surgery communities have made rapid strides in the past decade. Possibly stimulated by the excellent results of the foregut surgeons, 
We were surprised that there was no change in the use of laparoscopic, uh, laparoscopic approach for adrenalectomy or splenectomy during this study period. Our study cannot explain the, a reason for this. The low mortality after laparoscopic abdominal procedures remained stable at less than 0.5%, but the open mortality rate significantly decreased during the study period. Serious complication rates and wound infections have also significantly decreased in both open and laparoscopic approaches to major abdominal operations. The reasons for these observations are not clear, but can possibly be explained by improvements in patient selection, a more judi judicious use of IV fluids, and increasing prevalence of laparoscopy. Our study provides no data to confirm or refute these possibilities. The increasing use of laparoscopy raises two questions. First, should there be an increase in the number of minimally invasive surgery fellowship training positions across the country? The aim would be to decrease the morbidity and mortality of these procedures by expanding the skill set of practicing surgeons. And second, will American, surgeon remain, uh, American surgeons remain proficient in open abdominal surgery given the expanding role of laparoscopy? Our study has several limitations. We do not have follow-up period beyond 30 days, as this was in this quick uh, database looked at. Second, there are other possible predictors of outcomes, such as surgeon and hospital experience, that were not captured in the NISQIP data set. And third, we cannot exclude a selection bias because we do not know the indications for choosing open or laparoscopic approach. And four, uh, post-operative complications managed at non-NISQIP hospitals are not captured in the NISQIP data set, possibly creating a false low morbidity mortality rate. And in conclusion, laparoscopy is now the dominant surgical technique for major abdominal surgery in the United States. The use of laparoscopy increased significantly in six of the eight major abdominal operations studied, and the morbidity and mortality, as well as length of stay, all decreased significantly during the study period. Thank you very much. The uh, paper is open for questions. Dr. Marks? Uh, John Marks from Philadelphia, congratulations on a very nice study. I was wondering if you could um, share with the group, if you know, what is the penetrance of cases being done that are captured by the NISQIP database across the country? And the corollary to that would be, what is the type of hospital, academic, university, teaching, et cetera, and the volume of surgery that's being done? Because it just we see in the literature a wide variety in the I'm most aware of the colorectal world, and so it's great to see that we're greater than 50% across the board in laparoscopy, but sometimes you see the numbers, they seem higher or lower than you would expect. So I was wondering if that might be some explanation you could shed some light on it for us. Again, congratulations. Well, thank you. Um, the NISQIP participating hospitals, there's 374 hospitals currently participating in the NISQIP uh, uh, process for gathering data. Um, this number of hospitals has increased significantly uh, from 2005 through uh, 2013, what the, where the data set is available. Um, I can't comment to the actual numbers, the exact numbers increasing during the years. I do know that there is a wide range of participating types of hospitals, both university uh, and community teaching hospitals, as well as uh, centers that um, are strictly private practice hospitals. And there is a good, fair distribution across that uh, that range of hospitals. So regarding the question to the capture of uh, the penetrance of laparoscopy, I think it does a fair, uh, it, do, it does broadly uh, cover the hospital settings across the country. Um, is there is the second portion that I missed there? Just if you knew what percentage of those, how many hospitals are there? Oh, it's, it, it's low. It's, again, it's 374 hospitals among, I, I don't, don't know the total number of hospitals in the country. Microphone to the left. Hi, Paul Colavita, Carolina's Medical Center. Very nice presentation. I have a question about how you identified your laparoscopic patients prior to 2009. My understanding is the NISCOP database uses CPT codes. Many of the procedures you described did not have their own CPT codes until 2009. Certainly. Um, great uh, observation. The CPT codes were existent for the procedures other than Heller myotomy. Uh, Heller myotomy data is only present from 2009 uh, to 2013 um, in this set. Thank you. Yes. For, your, for your presentation, uh, were you able or did you think about including any acute care or urgent surgical mm -hmm. procedures in your study, so trauma or emergency surgery patients? 
we considered it, but the goal of the uh, the goal of the study was to look at major abdominal operations that could, on an elective basis, that one could choose, really depending on surgical preference, open or laparoscopic. What a general surgeon or uh, a general urologist would be able to uh, perform uh, on, with equal um, distribution, I guess, on their preference. Some, some of these uh, procedures, colectomy in particular, have a fairly high conversion rate to open. How does a NIPS, NISQIP uh, handle that as an intention to treat, or was it an uh, end procedure? That is an excellent question, which I will look into, and, and I'll email you a response. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, one additional question. So at our institution, we have 11 faculty in general surgery out of, I think, 39 who have done fellowship council, um, graduated from a fellowship council-sponsored fellowship, so an HPV surgery, GI surgery. And we came on to NISQIP in, like, 2012. And so that if our hospital came on, you would see a huge rise just because of the bias of how we take care of patients. Did you consider saying 2006, there's 200 hospitals, I'm just going to follow those 200 hospitals for six years and not look at all the other hospitals that are coming in that could potentially get biased to it in terms of um, really looking at changes in practice at the same hospital over time? That is an excellent suggestion. I had not thought uh, to look at that in that uh, look at that cohort of initial hospitals, but that's an excellent suggestion. Thank you. So that may be paper number two. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much.